This is a video for my grade 11 pre-cal students. And it's one more example of what to do in 7.3 when you're trying to solve uh, an equation for x that has both a quadratic and specifically a quadratic inside of an absolute value bracket. And your answers this time don't come out easy to check. So let's start by doing the usual. If you're just turning into this video now, you should pause it and try to solve this. So I'll give you a sec to do that. Okay, if you've solved it, see if you get the same answers that I do. First, I'm going to do what we call case one. And case one happens when the thing inside the bracket, the absolute value bracket, comes out positive. So if I do that, I would get, I'm going to move everything to the right side of the equation. So I'm going to get 0 equals x squared, negative 4x plus 5x is plus x, negative 2 minus 6 is minus 8. And it won't take me long to realize, don't, don't fight with this trying to factor it for very long. What two numbers times to make 8 add to make 1? No such thing, right? So you're going to go right away, I need the quadratic formula. So minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus 1 minus negative 32 is 33. Man, we can't buy a break on this question. We don't even get a radical that simplifies. Square root of 33 doesn't have any, any perfect squares in 33. Nope. So that's it. That's the answer we got to deal with. Um, let's see if case two is any nicer. Case two would be that the thing that came out of this absolute value bracket is the opposite, the negative of what's inside the bracket. Now, usually when I do these, I usually assign the negative to the other side, but it actually doesn't matter which side of the equation you make the negative. So I'm going to keep it on that side, and you'll probably see why I'm thinking this way in a minute. So if I take the negative of this bracket, I get x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals negative 4x minus 2. I'm going to move these two terms here to the other side. So I get x squared plus 9x. Um, what would that be? Negative 6 plus 2 is minus 4 equals 0. Once again, what two numbers times to make 4 add to make 9? No such creatures exist. So I know that I am using the quadratic formula. And again, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2 times a. So that one's not much. This one may be worse. 81 plus 16 is 97. I had to think about that for a while. Are there any perfect squares in 97? I think it's prime, actually. Blech. Good luck. How do we figure out what the, okay, we got four answers. The positive answer here, the negative answer here, the positive answer here, the negative answer here. How do we figure out which ones are extraneous? Now, as my class knows, I'm the biggest math nerd that's ever lived. I enjoy nothing more than just sitting around and doing arithmetic and algebra. So to me, this is like sitting down and doing a crossword puzzle to me. I'll roll up my sleeves and say, you got it, man. I'm going to plug these two numbers into my original equation. Why not? Let's do that. So let's do our check. So the first one I'm going to check is I'm going to check um, negative 1 minus root 33 over 2. So what's the equation I'm checking it in? I'm checking it in the absolute value of negative x squared. What's the original question again? I better, better make sure I use the right question. Plus 6 equals negative 4x minus 2. So if x is this number, and I put it here, here, and here, will it balance? This is fun for me. I love this. So the negative of this thing squared minus 5 times this thing plus 6, all absolute value, equals the negative of 4 times this thing minus 2. Well, I got to tell you, I can't tell just by looking at it that, yeah, the left and right sides look the same or look different. So I actually have to play with it. So I will. So I have the absolute value. Okay, what happens when you square 
this thing, I treat it like a binomial. So it's the square of 1, well, the square of negative 1, which is 1, the square of uh, negative root 33, which is 33. And then remember in the middle, when you square, say, a binomial, you times the two terms together and double it, right? So you'd have a negative times a negative, which is a positive, doubled. So it'd be plus 2 root 33. All divided by 2 squared is 4. Minus. Actually, instead of minus, I'm going to distribute negative 5 through this bracket. So plus 5 plus 5 root 33 over 2 plus 6 is equal to, and this would be um, positive 4 plus 4 root 33 over 2 minus 2. Okay. Remember my goal is to prove that the two sides are either the same or different? So I think the smart thing to do here might be to find a common denominator while I simplify. So 4, 2, and 1 have a common denominator of 4. So this one's already got a denominator of 4. All i got to do is distribute this negative through this bracket. So negative 1 minus 2 root 33 minus 33. How do I get this to the common denominator of 4? I'd have to times top and bottom by 2. So plus 10 plus 10 root 33. And this would become 4 for a denominator if I times top and bottom by 4. So there we go. This side's now over 4. And let's do the other, same thing to the other side. Let's get a common denominator of 4. So this has a 2. So if I times top and bottom by 2, I get this. And this I'd have to times top and bottom by 4. So let's see. 8 minus 8 is nothing. So this is 8 root 33 over 4, which simplifies down to 2 root 33. Let's see if this side simplifies down to 2 root 33. Well, let's see. What have I got over here? I've got negative 1 minus 33. That's negative 34. Negative 34 plus 10 is negative 24. Negative 24 plus 24 is 0. So all the constants go away. And then I have negative 2 root 33 plus 10 root 33, which is 8 root 33 over 4, which as you can see, is going to simplify down to 2 root 33. So, yep, this is an answer. But, of course, I'd have to check the other one. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to check the other one, which is, well, what is it again? What is the other one? Minus 1 plus root 33. over 2. Did I goof this up? Do I have a mistake in here? Maybe I do. Let me double check. I put a minus here, right? So negative, negative. So that'd be a positive. These two have to be positive. So that's a minus that I've distributed through there. No, I think I've got this. But now i got to do it again, but for a plus. So OK, let's put the plus in. So it is the absolute value of negative, negative 1 plus root 33 over 2, I should make this bracket bigger, squared um, minus 5 times negative 1 plus root 33 over 2 plus 6, absolute value is done, equals uh, negative 4 times, open a bracket, negative 1 plus root 33 over 2 uh, minus 2. Okay, so some of this is going to be pretty similar, right? The negative 1, when I square it, is going to be just a 1. The 33 is going to, the root of 33 is going to be a 33, but this time in the middle of this bracket, it's going to be this times this times 2, which will be a negative this time. Okay, and all over 4, minus, oh, this time again, I'm going to take the minus 5 times minus 1 and make that plus 5, but careful, the next term will be negative 5 times plus root 33, which is minus 5 root 33, so already a couple of terms look different. The other side, I might as well just, nothing, well, I guess, oh, no, I guess it is different on the other side, never mind, I thought I could save some time, but I can't. Negative 4 times 1 is 4, and uh, um, let's see, what else have I got? Negative 4 times root 33 is minus 4 root 33, um, all over 2, 
minus 2. Right? Make sure I'm not losing track of any negatives. Okay. Now, let's put everything again in our common denominator of 4 and distribute this negative while we're at it. So that's negative 1 plus 2 root 33 minus 33. And then this would be plus 10 minus 10 root 33 plus 24. All in an absolute value equals, and this side, again, I want everything over a common denominator of 4. So this would be 8 minus 8 root 33 minus 8. And at this point, I can stop, can't I? There's probably people looking at me going, you mean you can look at that and tell that the left and right sides aren't the same? Yup, and so can you. How am I telling that I can stop here? There is no way that this side of the equation can come out negative, and this side is negative, right? Because those 8's cancel, and I get minus 2 root 33. There's no way this side can give you minus anything. It's got an absolute value bracket around it. So my conclusion is this one is extraneous. Now, notice that I'm actually only halfway done the process. I still have to go back and check these two answers here. And I'm, I'm going to save you the trouble. Again, I know I love doing lots of arithmetic. To me, this is, this is like sitting down and, again, doing a crossword puzzle or doing a, doing a Sudoku or something. This is, this is a good time for me. But I, I recognize that some people would rather save all this work. And this is where, again, I feel like I'm pitching you something on late night TV. There must be a better way. Yup, there is another way you can tell something's extraneous without having to go through all this rigmarole. We can look at the piecewise function. So what is the actual function here? Well, the function here again was absolute value of x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to negative 4x minus 2. Now, there were two cases I made, right? Case 1 was where I just left this side the way it is now. Oh, wait a minute. It had a negative in front of it. I just got rid of the negative. Thank you for noticing that. Okay, so case one is where I left that one alone, right? So that would be this. Okay, and I'm going to let it equal to y. And of course, case two would be where I take the opposite of what's in here and make that equal to y. And if I'm looking at those two things, if I'm graphing y equals this thing with the absolute value, remember that y then in piecewise would be the original function or the opposite function, all I have to do now, and this is a lot less work, is figure out what the range is, right? Because obviously I'd need to know the x-intercepts. So what is the x-intercepts of this function? So I'm going to have to find them. So I'll maybe do that down here. If I set 0 to be negative x squared minus 5x plus 6, I can divide out a negative from both sides of the equation. And what two numbers times to make negative 6 and add to make positive 5? Careful, it's not 2 and 3. It's 6 and minus 1. Okay. So x equals negative 6, y equals positive 1. So you might even want to do a quick sketch of this. Right? That means you know that these things make Ws, right? So... At negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you'd have an x-intercept. At positive 1, you'd have an x-intercept. You, you know that the shape of this thing is going to be something like this. I don't really know how high it goes up. I don't know that I really care. Something like that, right? Whatever, right? So you know it's something like that. So actually, the negative version of this equation is this part. Right? So that part there exists when x is between negative 6 and 1. And this part 
exists when x is less than negative 6 or bigger than 1. Now I go back and see where the solutions came from. Now remember, this one represented which part? This one represented my case 1 solutions. And this is the only part that takes a little bit more thinking. In case 1, go back, go back, go back, go back to where you were. My case 1 solutions were this, or really this, right? Plus or minus, negative 1 plus or minus root 33 over 2. So negative 1. So check negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 33 over 2. All right, I am going to have to get an estimate for that number, but it's not that hard. Everybody here should be able to give me a pretty good estimate for the square root of 33. And if you can't, your grade 8 teacher will be very disappointed in you. Or was it grade 7? What year did you learn square roots? Oh, that was grade 7. So, okay, think back to grade 7. What do you know about the square root of 33? Well, it's between what two things? Between 5 and 6. Closer to 6? Pick an even number. It's easier to divide by 2. 5.8? That's a good estimate. So this is approximately negative 1 plus or minus 5.8 over 2. So I have two answers here. Approximately, I have negative 1 minus 5.8 over 2, which is negative 6.8 over 2. And the other answer would be negative 1 plus this. So that's positive 4.8 over 2. So that's approximately 3.4. Sorry, I lost my negative. Negative 3.4. And... 2.4. And if you go, again, these two things are for this answer. And I didn't mean to draw a line through it. I just tried. Hang on. Let's, let's use a uh, highlighter. So these two answers are for this case. Do they both work? Well, we already know one of them doesn't. And can you see that? You'd have to be between negative 6 and positive 1, and aha, 2.4 is extraneous. Do you get why it's extraneous? It's not between 1 and negative 6. But this number is, so that one is my solution. Well, actually, sorry, I circled the wrong thing. This is both of them again. Therefore negative 1 minus root 33 over 2 is my solution. Okay, we already knew that because we did all the arithmetic, but now let's apply this thinking to the other one. So the other two answers, here, I'll just, I'll rewrite this down here. The other two answers again were, so again, this was, we already tested this case. Now I'm testing this case, x squared plus 5x minus 6. And I'm testing the answer. i got to go back. Where was that answer? It was involved in 97 or something, right? There it is. Negative 9 plus or minus root 97 over 2. Negative 9 plus or minus root 97 over 2. Is it possible that both of them work or both of them don't work? Yes, actually it is. We've seen that. We've seen straight lines that hit absolute values of quadratics exactly once. Is it possible that it could hit exactly three times? Hmm. We'll have to we'll leave that question open. We'll, we'll talk about it later. But again, we're checking this in here. Why are we checking it in there? Because it belongs in there. Actually, now that I see this, I kind of kind of cluttered this up. Should maybe have done this. Uh, what was my range again here? This is when x is less than negative six, but bigger than one. And again, what I'm checking is I'm checking the answer. X equals negative nine plus or minus the square root of 97 over 2. Okay, let's again estimate. That's a very close number to 100, so, so it's close to 10. And again, I'd pick 9.8. Somebody might go, it's probably closer to 9.9. .9. We don't care. 9.8 is nice and easy to divide by 2. So I'm going to pick it. So x is around negative 9 plus or minus 9.8 over 2. Negative 9 plus 9.8 would be negative 0.8, which over 2 gives me negative 
if they were both minuses, I'd get negative 18.8 over 2, which is negative 9.4. Which of those is extraneous and which of them isn't? Well, negative 0.4 is not smaller than negative 6, nor is it bigger than 1. So it's out. Negative 9.4 is smaller than negative 6. Therefore, how did I get this one? I got this one by minusing. x equals negative 9 minus square root of 97 over 2 is the answer. So the two answers are this one. And where did I write it? Uh, didn't I put it in a box somewhere? Oh, and there it is, and this one. So there it is. That's, I know that's a lot of work, but is it as much work as I did to try to run that radical through the equation? Mm, I don't think so. All I had to really do is do a bit, of, a bit of estimating with a radical rather than actually work with it. And oh, hold, it, hold your question, this might answer it. I wanted to make sure I did it right. Of course, on the test, you're not going to have access to Desmos. I did make a little sketch, and I could make a little sketch for my line, too. What was my line again originally? My line was negative 4x minus 2. So that has a y-intercept of negative 2, and it has a slope of negative 4. Well, guess what? A slope of negative 4 is pretty steep. It's definitely going to hit here somewhere, and if you think about it, you know it has to hit somewhere else. You know that if you go up far enough, this arm here, I mean, it's not, it's not curving back on itself, but this arm will eventually meet it, and it does. So if you actually take a look at the Desmos of it, here's the graph. I hope this works. There we go. There's the, there's the function, and there's the graph, and as you can see, yep, it hits at that decimal, which, what did I say? Negative 3.4 was my estimate. That's pretty darn close. And my estimate was for the other one was negative 9 point something. There's our negative 9 point something. So, yep, it's 2. Okay, so if you solve one of these things and you get big, ugly radicals and it says you've got to tell me if it's extraneous or not, you can, feel free, I know I had fun doing it, you can run the radical through the formula, the equation, or you can just put the piecewise version down and figure out if your answer falls within the domain. And that, I think, is the strategy that you should use on a test because it's going to take way less time. And that's all I was going to show you for this one for today. Fun little problem. I enjoyed it. Okay. I will sign off this video for now if I can figure out how to get out of here. Oh, there we go.